<laughs> Getting good. little light oil on my finger, that's all. Um, same stuff I use to, with my cutting compound. Um, I, I use a dry diamond cutting compound, um, and I mix it with this kind of creamy oil stuff. And I, I'm using what's, wherever the hell it is. Hmm. Oh, where is it? What's in the cap? <laughs> Not much. It doesn't take much. Um, and with Ethiopian opal especially, you don't want to put a bunch on because it goes into the stone. So we're leaving that out and um, keeping a little bit of water nearby for, you know, polishing off the dust uh, when I'm cutting. Ain't that something, man? I mean, that is something. So, and this is getting really good, man. And I have graduated from my little battery-powered zooper to, uh, to uh, an official zooper with a plug. And when when my lovely wife is done eating, I'll have her find the, uh, uh, there's a flex shaft that fits on the end of that thing, so I don't have to hold this big, heavy uh, drill motor. Um, and then I've got the, a little flexible thing that doesn't hardly weigh anything that goes round and round really fast with my little zooper tools, my burrs, um, and I can do fine finishing work with it. Uh, and that's what we're going to use. I, I've been using uh, um, I used a uh, 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 where'd it go? I used these two just now um, on, on my big zooper. Um, this one to get in and, and use the heel when I'm taking out big parts and, and get into small parts and then go round around it in the, in the little holes, you know, like in here. Uh, and that to uh, that the bigger part then comes in and kind of smooths out the the surface, and we're getting there. This is, you know, um, this is a, a work in progress, but we're getting there. Look at that color. Man, that is nice color. Love the purples and blues on there. That's kind of cool. With the with the orange and red and yellow. Hi, uh, this uh, this phone focuses well enough that I can. Uh, look at my stone through my phone without wearing my stupid glasses. <laughs> mm. 
poor glassophone my life. And I, I really, uh, I got the, the cataract surgery a few years ago and um, brand new lenses put in my, my eyeballs. Um, so I've got bionic eyes and I can, outside I can see every sticker on every cactus all the way to the horizon. But when I hold something, uh, when I first got the, the surgeries, um, I had to wear glasses just to see the end of my hand. You know, I, I couldn't focus out here uh, at arm's length at all. And I'm to the point now where I can focus real well, uh, right up, except to, you know, like reading. Um, um, and, and fine finishing work, I, you know, to look down inside these little crevices uh, requires some assistance, and my phone does great. <laughs> I can do it with my phone. And that far out, man. So the cool thing about not having to do it for, you know, jewelry is that I, I don't have to um, choose which side I like best. Like both sides. <laughs> well, and, and I do. The, the, this is um, real nice on this side, and bright and pretty, and um, It's almost like what we call a grass pattern in, in Lightning Ridge Opal. Um, for obvious reasons, you know, it's like grass. And this side is kind of lumpy to uh, uh, determine, but um, it's what, what we call broad flash. Uh, and it's just um, broad bands or patches of color that shift and change as you move it. Um, And the other thing that happens is as you cut it, um, things change. Uh, the, the way the light enters the stone has everything to do with the colors you see. There's, there's no red or green or yellow inside the stone. It's just a little brown rock, basically. Um, and the, the light passes into the stone and breaks into these colors because of the structure of the stone, the unit cells of the, the stone uh, that make up the stone are half the size of a wavelength of visible light. And, and they line up in rows and columns, kind of like my, uh, my paper here. I can't get my phone to focus on it. Okay, anyway, rows and columns and, and, the, uh, and the individual particles are, create rows that are half the size of a wavelength of visible light and, and the, the different little mm, unit cells uh, show up kind of like the dots in this paper. Uh, and they're all lined up in rows and columns. Um, and those rows are half the size of a wavelength of light. So when, a wave, when light hits one side, uh, you know, passes through and, and hits the other side, 
and then bounces and, and goes back up the, the, out the other way, it has then traveled one wavelength, one full wavelength of light. Uh, and as you shift and change the angle of incidence, uh, the angle the light is coming in at, um, that angle changes, and which changes the, the size of that wavelength, and that's what changes the colors. So we call this a play of color. It's not like my ruby, for instance, and rubies are red. Opals are kind of clear or brown or black. Or um, I have blue opal here in Arizona. Um, and that is the body color. But the play of color is just light bouncing inside the stone. Isn't that cool, huh? I think it's really cool, ma'am. I've been cutting opal for at least 40 years and in love with them since I was seven. Uh, my dad bought my sister one. Her birthday was in October. Um, my dad bought my sister one over in Germany, in Idar Overstein, Germany. And I watched the guy cut it. And I said, wow, man. I gotta have, I gotta learn that. I gotta figure it out. And I've been chasing opals, basically, you know, really, truly, seriously, since I was seven years old. 